Welcome back to another edition of the Talking Lead Podcast, Leadheads. This is episode 273. So as you are hearing this, you're probably looking at your download and you're saying, wait a minute, he just dropped an episode. That's right, man. We got lots to talk about from now until the end of the year. So you need to be on your guard, be looking for a regular download of the Talking Lead Podcast, you know, maybe twice a week. I don't know. I don't know. Could be. We got that Black Friday Cyber Monday special edition show coming up. And uh, just to give you guys a little warm up with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce one of my guest hosts today. It's uh, no stranger to you, lead heads. It's our good buddy, Bill Hempstead. Lead heads, how you doing? Happy to be back. Marty or Lefty, whatever you want me to call you. You call me whatever you want to, buddy. <laughs> oh, there are lots of things I could call you, bro, but I'll yeah. keep it clean today. Oh, don't pull any punches, man. We, nah. We're going to have fun today. We're going to have a, yeah, a good time. So Bill is with the Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association, as you guys well know, and he was uh, he was part of our Watches for Heroes giveaway that we were doing uh, with Defy Watches. We gave away, what, how many of those did we give away? Like, 14 or something 14 total yeah 14 i'm I'm still getting emails from you leadheads about that so it's it's over that we're not doing that anymore right did we give all those away we gave them all out right we we did okay so uh did we or did we that promotion yes we did so um uh, we awarded all those to very deserving people and uh, I just want to say, if if you were one of the recipients, uh, you're supposed to receive those, and you've not received it yet, let me know. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's he's got them all out, but I just want to make sure that uh, everybody received those that uh, that earned them. So, uh, but yes, Bill is alluding to uh, a new uh, what are we calling this? A new award, new award program that we're doing. Yes, we are. Reward. We're rewarding. That's what we're doing. We're going to reward you leadheads. And Bill has brought a buddy on with him to help us make this announcement. Uh, Bill, you want to go ahead and introduce our our third co-host? Well, leadheads, I'd like to introduce uh, Chris Brooks, the Director of Brand Management and New Product Development of Buck Knives. Chris, Yay. welcome on. Thanks, guys. How are you doing? Doing good, man. Welcome in. Yeah. Thank you. Leadheads, hello. Say hello to the Leadhead Brigade. <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna get inundated with uh, with messages. So I want you guys to show Brooksy a warm welcome. Go to Buck Knives. Go to their Instagram page. Go to their Facebook page, and uh, let them know that you heard about him on uh, Talking Lead here. And there's gonna be some other things you're gonna want to uh, post on there too. We're gonna get to those. We got a lot to talk about today. But we bef- do. Before we do that, I want to go ahead and thank. Those that make this show possible, and that's our sponsors. The official optics of Talking Lead is Right On Optics, RightOnUSA.com or RightOnOptics.com. Either one of those work. And uh, you guys have been hearing me talk about their new 4 to 32 by 56 IR. It's amazing. It's a tack driver. If you guys are into the long range precision shooting, you definitely want to check out. Uh, this scope. It is uh, feature rich. We had um, J Mac on a couple episodes uh, ago and he was uh, outlining all that for you. Uh, their new one to eight uh, is out. It's awesome as well. And they've got the red dots. And of course, I'm telling you guys, Black Friday Cyber Monday show is coming up. There's going to be deals there that you cannot pass up. And you're going to hate me for it because you're just going to be. Reaching into the wallet <laughs> because of these deals, but you're going to hate yourself if you don't do them. Uh, and th- they've got a great one coming, so stay tuned for that. Uh, X Steel Targets. X Steel Targets. The uh, best, most affordable AR500 steel targets on the market today are X Steel Targets. I'm sure you guys uh, go visit Bud. And uh, of course, you know, you can expect them to have an awesome deal coming up as well. Um, Everybody, everybody's going to have deals. We've got, which is probably going to be a three-hour show, Bill, and Bill's going to co-host that uh, Black Friday Cyber Monday show with me. 
Oh, oh my. What day are we doing this? As <laughs> uh-huh. soon as we get done with this. <laughs> All right. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be a long day for me yeah. then. I, I still have a few people that are I'm waiting uh, to get some deals in. But uh, like I said, it's going to be well worth it. You guys are going to, you guys are going to really, really appreciate uh, all the deals that you're getting. Some exclusive just to you, leadheads. Uh, modern Spartan Systems don't just clean your firearms; optimize them with Modern Spartan Systems line of accuracy oil, carbon destroyer, their greases, and of course, Bill, the TVT. Let me grab. I got a big engine additive bottle of it right here. The TVT Green Engine Oil Additive, it will uh, bring your engine back to life and add life to it. It's done it for the lead sled. Get some new shoes on her. Um, I'm a little bald right now. I haven't had ta- a chance to get out and get the new tires. Tire shopping is just, it's like going out shopping for, you know, shoes. There's so many options out there. No comment yeah, from you, you know, guys? You, no, you, you don't buy tires? Y'all don't buy tires? <laughs> Oh yeah! It's, oh yes! It's definitely expensive. Yeah, I need to get no, a tire other. sponsor. That's what it is. There you go. <laughs> so you let heads find me a tire sponsor out there. Uh, <laughs> uh, and of course, our newest sponsors. You guys have done a great job in welcoming welcoming them as uh, official sponsors now. Keltec, Keltec Weapons, um, known for their bull pups, their rifles, their shotguns are amazing. The sub two thousand. I've I've had a sub two thousand now for probably going on ten years now. Absolutely love their their sub two thousands. Nine millimeter, perfect truck gun, perfect backpack gun. Um, did you see mine when you were up here, Bill? Yeah, I did. I had that uh, yep. ser not Cerakote, but uh, dip. I used the uh, dipstick hydrographics on that. The skulls. The, the skulls, skulls. Correct. Yeah, black. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can't have yeah. just a plain gun, man. I gotta. I got to doll it up. Yeah, I've got three or four sitting here. I got to do something with soon because, yeah, they're just straight black guns. Yeah. 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 All in time. There's definitely some solutions for that. Oh, yes. Get a, yeah. Get a hold of Chance and see what Chance can do for me. Uh, speaking of Chance uh, and Prom 1 Camo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I, I have been informed that uh, Chance has perfected their camo pattern. And uh, they're going to start doing Prime One uh, Cerakotes, Prime One Camo yeah. Cerakotes. Yeah, Chance is the only licensee uh, authorized to Cerakote Prime One Camo patterns. Yeah, so we're took gonna, them a while to get it down, but I'm thinking that about having genius. that that big old four by thirty two because it's got a lot of real estate on it. Getting it, uh, throwing a little Prime Camo on it. Now, what pattern are you going to go with? You're going to go with Blackout, or I don't know. MP? Because if, if I keep it on my 308, because my 308 is FDE mm-hmm. already, then if I go a different color, then I'll have to get my 308 done too. Yeah. You know? So Decisions, we'll decisions, buddy. I know. I know. And they've got so many different uh, colors. Yeah. yeah, they do. But uh, speaking of them, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, they've got deals. Uh, I haven't worked out anything with Chance yet, but Prime One does. They've got uh, – and they got a great – a great little uh, giveaway they're going to give for you leadheads too. So stay tuned for that. Ooh, look forward to that one. Um, but guys, I hear the jack wagon train rolling in, and I know we've got at least <laughs> three or four that we've got to take care of. So Gunny, bring that train in. Hey, Ralph, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at eight and I. It is time for the talking lead jack wagon of the week. So brace yourself, baby. Like, oh, oh, that's excellent. Yeah. All right, the train has stationed, and uh, I'm going to defer to my guest. Who wants to go first, Bill, or do you want to go Brooksy? Which one? Chris, all you. All right. I suppose the one that uh, gets my attention right now is the uh, the daycare uh, fight club. The daycare fight club. <laughs> where the, uh, the teacher got... Uh, two of the kids together for Fight Club, uh, and that thing got filmed, and it is now going viral. It is, man. Those kids are going at it, man. It looked like fun. <laughs> so, yeah, I got to be yeah. honest with you. I mean, it looked like fun. Yeah, they had those no big doubt. old Hulk gloves on. You know, nobody was getting right? hurt. Just duking it out, but uh, it's probably not the greatest idea. If you've got a kid in daycare, and you're a little concerned anyway. So. Yeah. It's yeah. uh 
<clears throat> that's a marginal one. I think it's kind of a fun thing, but uh, well, yeah. just the fact that the I mean, the teachers were sitting there hooting and hollering and you know agging them on and cheering. Looked like they might have had a little side bet going. I don't know, but <laughs> there probably was. They probably had something on it. Um, but uh, you know, I don't think anybody was hurt. Uh, the kids didn't seem like they were upset. They were having a good time with it too. But yeah, I mean, it's not something that you do at a public place like that, you know. Yeah, probably not a good idea. Yeah, and no. you, you definitely no. don't film it. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, there cannot be evidence of it. No, that was their downfall. Uh, That's right. That's usually the downfall, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Evidence. Hey, I got a really good idea. Let's film this. That's just <laughs> not a good idea. Yeah, never. So that one was uh, sent in, uh, actually that was sent in a couple of weeks ago uh, by Alex Kellum. So thank you, Alex, for sending that uh, nomination in. Um, but it's a funny video. If you guys haven't seen the video, just uh, Google uh, f- uh, Daycare Fight Club, and you'll find all kinds of videos on it. <laughs> all right, Bill, what you got? Uh, I'm going to go with the uh, the homeless vet and the couple that made up the story about uh, he the homeless vet gave the woman his last 20 bucks so she could fill up her tank of gas, and they started a GoFundMe page that raised over 400000 bucks. and it turns out it was all bullshit, completely contrived, made up, and now they're all being charged, at least that's what I read on it. I'm not going to open it because it just screws up the audio, so... Um, yeah, read it. No, I can't open it. Read it because uh, if I oh, open okay, it up, I got it. All right, so yeah. it says, Homeless veteran and couple accused of making up story for GoFundMe account. I need to start one of those. Would you lead heads chip in on that if I went and started one of those? Just curious. Um, (laughs) I'm just kidding. There is a new (laughs) twist in the story where a couple from New Jersey created a GoFundMe account to help a homeless veteran. A complaint has been filed that says the three of them were in on a get-rich-quick scheme together. Right, do you remember the New Jersey couple who started a crowdfunding campaign for a homeless man? It, it's got to make you wonder how many of those GoFundMes are just bogus. I, I always am curious about that, and that's why I don't really ever get well, involved with those things. I mean, that's why you always you always check. You know, you double check. You don't just aimlessly give your money out unless it's People to talk do. and lead. It's amazing. People give their money away like crazy. It's unbelievable what they'll give to. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. And it's very generous of them. But you know, oh. how, are you, how are you to know that these guys are pulling a scam? So Sure. They're giving with a good heart. I mean, they're mm-hmm. doing it for, in their minds, the right reasons. But you got to vet that out. Yeah, I was trying to read more to the story, but then it's there's nothing but a bunch of other stories here, and there's no link to the rest of the story. So, um, Anywho... I guess they got busted, and uh, says they're all expected to face charges. And this says it was only two hours ago, so this is recent. Let me yeah. pl- let me play this little news clip. Do you remember the New Jersey couple who started a crowdfunding campaign for a homeless man? Who- well, he was homeless. Was he? So I, I think he was I mean, homeless. I, it's so hard to believe when people are yeah, thieves. But and there's liars, a lot of shadiness right? here. Yeah, he apparently gave her his last twenty dollars when she was stranded on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. According to the reports, it was all just a ruse to get as much money from donors who believe their very sad story. Yeah, everyone was in on it. Everybody. Last year, uh, D- uh, Mark uh, D'Amico and Kate McClure raised about four hundred thousand dollars to help Johnny Bobbitt, who said that he was a homeless man. Well, he sued the couple for withholding money from him. But a complaint says that he was in on the get rich, get rich quick scheme. scheme. <laughs> All three expected are wow. expected to face charges of conspiracy theft by deception for working together. So the only That's thing funny. is that no one. Yeah. So um, so what it was was uh, the, supposedly the homeless guy gave the chick twenty bucks because she was stranded. Mm-hmm. His last twenty bucks, and she did like a, a video of that and went viral, and then they started that GoFundMe thing and that's where they got over four hundred thousand dollars but there's like pictures of them here uh like them doing selfies with one another and uh yeah it's <laughs> it's pretty funny um but yeah man i mean just don't don't believe everything you read always always do a little background check and let's just give it to talking lead like i said so <laughs> you're stuck on that one yeah come on i am i am i'm thinking about going and doing a gofundme account or what are those other ones that people do uh, some of the other podcasts do them. I don't know what they're called. They're like a Patreon. Patreon. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I've never even I've never even been to Patreon. I don't know what that is. So, 
All right, so let's see. We got another one, don't we? Don't we have another one? Yes, we have a li- another listener submitted one here. And this one comes from Geo Race 34. And I believe he's up in Toronto. So it says, Hey, Marty, check out these jack wagon riders at the city of Toronto. Please have Gunny run over them and back it up again. <laughs> so what he's talking about is here's the link uh gun it's coalition for gun control and this is in canada guys so i thought they had already taken all their guns there i'm just kidding they 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 do have uh, uh pretty tight gun laws there but they do get to enjoy some of their gun rights um toronto november 13 2018 the coalition for gun control launched a national and hard-hitting advocacy campaign today in Toronto urging Canadians to let the federal government know that they want an immediate ban on civilian ownership of handguns and military assault weapons. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. What's what's happening here in America. The National National Advocacy Campaign, titled Trigger Change, (laughs) okay, uh, aims to (laughs) encourage Canadians to go online and use their voice as ammunition, they're killing me with their, their little <laughs> catchphrases here, to yeah. help pass gun control legislation. Um, so what they've done is uh, the big famous Toronto sign. When you come into Toronto, they've got that big uh, colorful Toronto sign. They've got a, a uh, I guess, one of their logos. It's a bullet um, with Canadian, just like the Canadian flag there. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, our fellow Canadians are still facing uh even more i mean there sounds like they're wanting more gun control more legislation put in even in canada which i mean they've got a whole lot more than we've got here already um they're they're citing that uh the rise in gun violence is not unique to toronto but rather is a part of a larger even more troubling canadian trend (laughs) so it's a trend from 2013 to 2017 the country's firearm related crimes increased by over 40 percent handguns currently account for nearly 60 percent of shooting homicides while an increasing uh, proportion of crime guns that have been traced are coming from within canada as opposed to the u.s so and again you know you can't trust stats so you got to do your own research on this i guarantee you they've they've taken some reports and some statistics and they've twisted and turned them around uh to meet their political agendas here. But uh, thank you, Gio, for sending that in. You definitely have our uh, our sympathy here in America. We know what you're going through. We're going through it too. Um, but I thought they were already outlawed in Canada, uh, handguns and assault weapons. Um, I don't know. I don't either. Any of you Canadians out there, um, Gio, you'd be a good one. Uh, get us up to date on your, your gun laws and what all's going on there. So that does it for the Jack Wagon Train. Unless you guys have anybody else. Is that it? That's it. That's, That's it. it. Okay. Very good. So um, I was at, as all you guys know, I was at uh, Royal Range this past weekend. They were celebrating Veterans Day. I had a, I had a great uh, event there. Uh, lots of people showed up. A lot of you leadheads showed up. Appreciate you coming out and supporting them. Um, we got to meet Chris Spence. He was part of a Task Force Dagger um, that went over to Afghanistan, and of course they've made a big movie out of this. The the twelve was it the twelve horsemen? Is that what it's called? I believe yeah. so. It had Thor in it. Um, <laughs> the guy that played <laughs> Thor, um, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, that guy. Um, so we got to meet Chris. Uh, did a an awesome interview with him. I actually did it live too, so some of you guys got to see it live. Um, but I'm going to uh, cut that in. Uh, before we tell you guys about our awesome promotion that we're going to be doing with Streamlight, Buck Knives, Fleoa, and, uh, of course, yours truly. So uh, let's cut into that now, and uh, we'll be right back, guys. All right, we're going to give everybody a little minute to get on here. What's up, Leadheads? We are getting ready to go live. We're here at Royal Range, and uh, we got Chris Spence joining us. And uh, Chris uh, is with, uh, actually he's here promoting horse soldiers. Uh, Chris was one of the original horse soldiers. 
Uh, you guys have seen the movie 12 Strong. So we're going to talk about the book. We're going to talk about Chris's time over in Afghanistan. And uh, we've got a little piece here from talk, – talk about that real quick. Right there, what you're seeing is a piece of the World Trade Center. It was uh, one of the I-beams out of the North Tower held up by my son. And it was given me by the New York Police Department. Very nice. And how long ago did you get that? I got that in about 2003. 2003? Yes. It's a nice piece of history there. Very nice. So uh, I'm going to turn this over to our camera. What's your name? Say it loud. Christian. <laughs> Christian. Okay, Christian. Christian is going to be our cameraman, uh, Leadhead. So uh, when you see people's names pop up there, just say hi to them. Don't touch the screen, though. Okay. Hi. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Chris, we're at Royal Range, USA, and you're, you're a local. Yes. Uh, you're from around here, and you just you – just, can you see it right there? Oh, let me turn it around. I'm sorry. I did that wrong for you. My bad, buddy. There we go. Is that better? Yes. Okay. All right. I, I was uh, disabling my cameraman there. Uh, so you're local. You're from uh, the Clarksville area. Correct. All right. And uh, talk about the events that happened in Afghanistan and, and what led to the creation of this book. Um, as we all know, after 9-11, some of the first forces out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky, were um, the SF ODAs from Fifth Special For Forces Group. Um, we got into uh, Uzbekistan in a place lovely called K2. Mm -hmm. There we established our operational base, and we began putting teams through their planning cycle before we, we deployed them into Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, we had sent in about three teams, and then on November 2nd, um, they came to me and said, hey, look, we need to pack our bags. We're going in in the next 48 hours. Just so, like that. Yeah. Just like that. <laughs> That's how much notice you had. So we did a quick planning session, flew in on 2 November, linked up with General Dostum in 9-5 when, uh, when they were on the ground um, in the Darya Suf Valley, which means a valley of caves, a river. Yeah, valley of caves. Mm-hmm. And that's in the movie. You see that lovely cave complex right. that they were li that they were living in. We did live in caves, except the caves were very very small. And the other part of the the, uh, the cave issue that we had to overcome was the the Afghani's would store the horses in the caves. <laughs> so you know you can imagine what that those are stables. Huh? Yes. Yeah, so you can imagine what that smelled like. Stanky. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's so living it, living in a cave in the beginning of November in 2001. And how long were you guys there? We were there from two th um, from November until we came out in March. So uh, as far as the accuracy of the movie, how accurate is that movie? There's some great stuff that is... It's a great movie. I, mean, I really enjoyed the movie. There's some great stuff that's captured in the book from the movie that is a great replica of what we actually did. But as we all know, Hollywood takes liberties... And they tell a story in a manner in which the American public can better uh, understand. And that's they take their liberties with that. But there is a lot of truth to it. Yeah. But there is some Hollywood thrown in as well. Well, of course. You know, they gotta, they got to sell tickets, put butts in seats, you know, so to speak. Um, but uh, as far as your experience there, what's, what's some of the, the things that you, that you take away? Fond, fonder memories, obviously, you know. Um, there's a we don't get too gruesome. There's a bunch of funny things. Um, the first barrier we had to overcome once we got into Afghanistan was the language barrier. Oh, no doubt, yeah. Well, it wasn't with the people. It was with the horses. <laughs> with the horses. Well, okay. the horses don't speak English. So all the whoa, the giddy up stuff, the John Wayne stuff we grew up with. That would make sense, yeah. That does not work. So yeah. whoa does not mean whoa in um, Dari. So we had to get a quick crash course on what are the commands we need to use so we better work with the with the. Horses How long did that process take you to overcome that learning curve? About five minutes. Well, not long at all. Okay. Well, we just learned the basic commands because right. left, left and right are still left and right. Right. But stop, go, things like that were the ones that we really needed to make sure that we were able to do. The other issue we had was the horses were all uppity, and they enjoyed kicking each other and biting e each other as we rode. And then from time to time, individual horses would want to take charge, and they would run up to the beginning of the formation that we were in. And so one of our least experienced horse riders, it seemed to be his horse mm -hmm. all the time, so we'd have to um, get the horse to go uphill to wear the, ho the horse out 
So we're com- then comply and get back in line with everyone else. Now, prior to this, did you have any experience riding horses? Yes, I grew up in Oregon. I rode horses since a small kid, okay. so I had no problems. So you, you had a leg up on, on your other guys. I saddled up, so to speak. <laughs> so to speak. So were, was, were there just 12 of you? No, th- there was an actual 12-man ODA. I was with a C team, okay. a command and control team, which came in to work with General Dostum and 9-5. Gotcha. So, guys, we're with uh, Chris Spence. He is one of the original 12 horsemen. You guys have seen the movie. The book is out. It is right here, Horse Soldiers. And you guys know that we're at Royal Range USA today. I've been uh, pushing, promoting it, getting you guys out here. If you didn't get a chance to make it, um, I'm sure Chris will probably be out Royal Range maybe sometime again because yes. he's, he's local. He's a local guy. Um, so we'll have opportunity to, uh, to do some things with Chris uh, in the in the future, and all the proceeds for the books we sell are going to the Special Forces Scholarship Fund, which is a, a nonprofit group that provides uh, merit-based scholarships for the children of Special Forces um, and support soldier children. Uh, very nice. Is that uh, all the sales? Yes. Okay. So if they want to get a copy, if they weren't able to make it out here to Royal Range today and get an autographed uh, copy by you, uh, where can they go and and get that? Well, they'll have to wait until the next time. Uh, Talk about lead at Royal Range. Royal Range, okay. And we'll come back again and do another one of these. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. Uh, so, Chris, uh, you're a new guy to the yes. show. Yes, I've got a line of new guy questions that I ask. I thought it was going to be a case of beer. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe, maybe at the end. <laughs> we'll do, we got to get out of the, uh, the gun shop first. Uh, how did you originally get involved with firearms? What's your earliest recollection as a, as a child being exposed to firearms? Probably about three to four years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, sure, was your father taking you out? No. I, I was, well, my, we had guns all over our house. Okay. So to ensure that I didn't play with the guns I wasn't supposed to, my father bought me a court gun. A court gun, okay. Back when you could have court guns. <laughs> what so, do you mean back when you could? Did they not still make court oh, guns? Oh, no. Not, not that I've seen. Not the shot out pieces of Yeah, court. they had the string, uh, string attached These didn't have strings. Oh, okay. Because you could get those at Cracker Barrel used to. Right. Well, back in the old days, you had full rifles where you had the cork in there, and I, my first gun was a cork gun. Okay. Do you still have that? No. That would be a cool piece to still have. But I have the twenty two I was given next, which is a twenty two my father found in the ditch when he was a kid, which he passed on to me. You just found it in the ditch? Walking down the road. That's pretty scary. <laughs> <laughs> just finding guns laying around. That's the uh, typical image people have of America, I think, anyway. <laughs> so... Um, obviously, you've got military uh, background. Well, yes. when, when did you start in military service? I joined the military in 1986 and retired in 2011. Okay, so you were there for a while. 25 years. I joined up um, for college money. I'm going to do my first four years, get my college money, go to college. 25 years later, I retired. How long ago did this, uh, this event happen in Afghanistan? How long 2001. Ago? Uh, okay. 17 years. 17 years ago this week, I was actually in Afghanistan on a horse. Okay. And do you still keep in touch with any of yes any of the Afghans, the people from Afghanistan? Um, the only one I'm really in contact with is the ambassador of Afghanistan. I'm on his emailing list, and I met him at the memorial where we dedicated the horse soldier statue. Oh, that's cool. Still in his, and of course, I'm sure you're still in touch with your unit. Yes, I'm unit. with many of the members of the of the unit. We do fun, we've done some fundraisers to, um, together for the Special Forces Scholarship Fund, and then um, I was it I was lucky enough to be asked to go to the Indianapolis 500, where they had a uh, rep, the replica of the horse soldier statue. Oh, nice! On a float, and I was asked to participate in that. Yeah. Now you were telling me that um, the only reason that we've got pictures. Hold this book up, if you would, uh, for our. I've got Instagram going live here, guys. Um, so Chris actually took a lot of these pictures that are in this book. Can you show some of those too? Sure. And we had a blown up one of the of the the famous one that you sent. Do you want us to go get? Do you want us to go get that? I can have some go gra- grab. Yeah, I that. think you got it in there, don't you? We, but they've got the color version, and it comes through a little bit better. Yeah. The one right here. This is the picture that Donald Rumsfeld held up and told um the United States that, yes, we do have American forces in Afghanistan, and they just happen to be on horseback. And they're doing it John Wayne style, baby. <laughs> Minus the English giddy-up and everything else. So. Right. So what, do you remember the commands? Yeah, door was how we used to um, to um, stop them, and you could still click your tongue and 
get them to go, but usually the Afghanis would use a stick that they would smack them with, a riding crop, so to speak, right. to smack them to get them to go. Yeah. But, but door, can't go wrong with that because that means stop. Yeah. And when they get feisty, if you pull back on those reins, it's door, door, door. Yeah. That would get them to settle down. So is, uh, overall, I mean, you with the experiences with horses, how did these horses handle? How were they? How would you rate them to – what breed were they? They were a mix. We – Assume they were a mix between what Genghis Khan brought over when he came through mm-hmm. and then what the British bought, b- brought when they came through. So nothing they, like you'd see in this country. No, so it was, a, it was an amalgamation of those two breeds of horses. So it was a cross between a step pony and what you'd call a somewhat of a horse. Because when we got on them, we looked like Bigfoot ri- <laughs> riding a donkey because we looked entirely too big for these horses. Yeah. The saddles were made from wood covered in blankets. So the term saddle sore took on new meaning for, for us. Yeah, no doubt. And then the stirrups were up so high because most Afghanis' legs are shorter. And you're not going to adjust the seat of somebody else's car when you drive it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you just dealt with your legs being up high. Uh, now, did, did any of those make their way over to America, any of those horses? Um, not, not that I'm aware not of that, now. Not that breed. No. Probably not something that would go over well here. In, no, in unless the we, yeah, I'd, we prefer the nice mustangs and the stallions that we have running around here. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, so you're um, you're retired, obviously. Yes. Uh, you, what are you doing? What do you work for a small company based in North Carolina called Leader Solutions and Decision Support? We do team building, leadership development for for companies we also do a lot of risk mitigation for people who travel um, a lot of college students like to travel we work for the university of north carolina oh, nice. and we provided their um their um moorhead kane scholarship students they travel to third world countries and they work for ngos there so a lot of them have never traveled outside of the united states other than to maybe europe some vacation spots but we're talking about kids going into uganda yeah india uh, madagascar and so we provide them some basic first aid training, um, risk mitigation, um, how to, you know, deconfliction stuff. Right. Just in case something happens, they're better prepared. De-escalate it. Yeah. Yes. And also what predators look like. You know, we look at this is profile. The, yes, this is the typical <laughs> not a profile. Yeah. This is the typical profile guy. But there's also the guy who's going to, you know, start talking to you like I'm lost. Then someone's ripping stuff out of your bag while you're focused here. Yeah. Also, we give them, you know, travel tips like when you show up to Spain and you are, um, in need of a Starbucks double latte, whatever the kids get get these days, <laughs> right. and you feel like it's a good idea to lay your backpack on a chair while you go and order, and then you come back five minutes later and all your stuff's gone. Mm. Makes sense. And I'm sure that's probably a pretty uh, in-demand service that you guys have. It it really is, and it's starting to come. It's starting to come of its own. Did more people traveling now, and just you know, the more prepared you are to, when you enter another country, the better time you'll have. And it takes a lot of the worry of your planning out of it. If you got someone who you know who provides a known product with good background information, it just gives you a sense of security before you walk on yeah. that uh, plane. Now, is that like a, a large corporation, a university type thing, or can individual parents because individual parents can, can do get it as in well. touch with you guys yes. and they can schedule that? So, if you guys are interested in getting in touch uh, with Chris, you got children that are going to be traveling abroad, or you're going to be traveling abroad how can they get in touch with you uh look up a uh, leader solution and decision support on the web lsds.us um just type in there go to our risk mitigation s- section tell us what you're looking for and somebody will get back to you and we'll uh help you build a plan that meets your travel needs very cool i like that service uh so back to our questions uh when it comes to um pop culture uh, whether it's a movie or a TV show or maybe a magazine or I don't know if you're into the, like the social media stuff, YouTube and that kind of stuff. What's that, your that would be a question to ask my son. Ask your son. <laughs> <laughs> What's your go-to that's gun related? I usually go to my old 18 Bravos. Just because they're the weapons guys, uh-huh. and they answer any weapons questions because they stay up with that. I would well, say, not everybody has that connection, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I go to the um, expert source, and then I'll, you know I'll pick up guns and ammo every once in a while. Yeah, read through that. Like or, guns and ammo magazine. What about a movie? What's just your go-to favorite? It doesn't have to be gun related. What's your favorite movie? Well, for a gun related that actually does gun related stuff correctly, I think you'd have to say it's Heat. Okay. With um, 
that's one of our top answers. Is with he, uh, Robert De Niro, the whole mag. Val Kilmer. Uh, yeah, because the whole magazine reload change is just spot on. And it's actually good to see someone reload every once and a while. It finally breaks the myth of the of the everlasting magazine. Yeah. John uh, Adams the Third says he has that book. He says it's a great book. I have a copy. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, so what about TV shows? What, what was your what's your favorite go to TV show? I hate to say I usually watch history stuff. Yeah. Or Discovery Channel. Yeah, I do too. It's Love le- learning stuff. I mean, I like documentaries, things like that's, that. That's I mean, that's exactly what I watch. I dig um, those. But my my all time favorite go to TV show. Um, I would say in for my my twenties, teens, teens and twenties, Magnum PI. Yes. Love Magnum PI. And prior to that, the Lone Ranger, baby. <laughs> Love the Lone Ranger. And of course cartoon wise, G.I. Joe. The real American hero. Star Blazers. Star Blazers, what is that? Star Blazers is one of the first Japanese a- a- anime cartoons that came out that they would play on American TV. Okay. And it was about a spaceship that the Earth was being attacked by aliens. They dug up the Yamamoto battleship and they turned I it never into saw a, that. they turned it into a spaceship and they went against the Gamelon Empire. That is cool. How long ago was that? In the seventies. Okay. All right. Well, I was born in 71, so, and, I mean, that would have been kind of my era. And you can actually, they had the reruns on Hulu a couple months a, ago, but as they rotate stuff. They rotate them around? Yep. Uh, was it kind of anime like um, Speed Racer? Yes. I love Speed Racer. Everybody loves Speed Racer. Yeah. I actually want to get one of my ARs uh, painted up. Maybe my AK. Maybe I'll get my AK done with the... Uh, speed racer theme. Speaking logo. of speaking of AKs in Afghanistan. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you about those. Yeah, pretty much it's like a family heirloom. So the AKs were decorated. They had like Very um, ornate. They had they had like col- well they had like colored binding stuff wrapped around the um, the butt the butt stocks or the forward grips. They were just very ornate and they were there is like their family heirloom that was passed down from father to son. So they were always decorated just like the horses were. They had little decorations on the bridle on the, you know. It was like you know instead of putting spinners on your car, right? They would decorate their horses, their, their horses and their yep. guns. <laughs> yep. So some of those guns are probably, like you said, they're heirlooms. Yeah, they're um, probably... they Passed down from generation to generation. They're, they're probably dropped off during the Russian... Um, Occupation. A, the, the Russian-Afghan yeah. war. Yeah. And were left there, were picked up, and then they become that... Look what we got. Right. Because when we were driving to Kanduz, there's an old field artillery piece that the Russians left. So it's basically you drive along this route until you see the artillery piece, and then you turn left. So it turned into a road, into a road sign. Oh, okay. Now, did you guys have any issues as far as with your uh, your firearms working out there in that in those environments? That no, condition? they worked fine. They worked great. So you guys didn't have an opportunity or a need to borrow to use any no. of the, yeah, their AKs or anything like that. No. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Were you able to? Um, and I don't know if it was legal. I guess it could. Were you able to maybe trade or get one of their AKs? We probably could have, but we didn't. You didn't do uh, that. But we did bring back a lot of um, World War One um, bayonets. Oh, nice. That were from like 1913, 1917. Where did they, how did they acquire those? You, you, I have no idea, but there were just crates and crates. crates. Of those, there was an old French tank from World War One that one of the teams found. I mean, that place is like an arms dump. <laughs> I mean, in quality jangy in every room, there were stacks of um, RPG 7s just stacked up to the ceiling in some cases. Yeah. There's it, thousands of uh, of them. John wants to know if there are any AK forty or AK seventy fours there. I didn't really see five, any. Five four five. Right, I really didn't see that many, if if any at all. But it was AK forty seven heavy. Yeah, I'll bet. I would love to get my hands on some of those. That would be, that'd be sweet. Uh, any other your heads on uh, IG got questions? There were also the old PPG forty threes from World War Two with the um, with the big drum. Yeah, there were a bunch of those lying around too. Just lying around. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they're probably still there too. They're probably still just lying around there, uh, if they hadn't got blown up by now. Um, so let's see. We have military, pop culture. Um, I got lost my train of thought here. Our next question is: Oh, what's your next gotta have, wanna have um, firearm? If you were, if you had 
you know, the money to go out and buy it today, what would it, what would it be? Right now I'm looking at getting a, a compact. So I have only thing I've done is I've got a Kimber, I've got a USP full size. I'm looking for something more compact, Glock, USP wise. Okay. I'm still playing in between with what which one I want to get. So, so Kyle, are you single stack or double stack? When you say compact, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll have to be a double. I'll have to see. I've, it's all about your hand, yeah, and what feels comfortable. Exactly. And so, unless depending on single or double, I don't. That doesn't bother me. Yeah. But it's got to be comfortable in my hand, able to easily conceal, easy to um, grip, mm-hmm. and then you know it doesn't wear a big hole in my back when I'm driving around in my car. Now, I, I mean, my lead heads know that I'm a big uh, Glock geek. I like Glocks. I like all guns, but you know, I prefer, <laughs> Glocks fit in my hand. You know, they fit my hand. The new uh, 19X that they've got, that's the hybrid between the 17 and the 19. Okay. Really like it. I can, I, uh, um, uh, appendix carry it. Okay. And it's comfortable and it's, you know, you'd think that it would probably be too big being on the, you know, the 17 frame, but it's not. It, it's very comfortable. Uh, so laws be damned, rules be damned, money be damned. What would you own? A Barrett. No, anything. What would you own? Oh. Anything. Money be damned, laws be damned. I love it. I love it. And, and, and it is a cool gun. Everyone you know? thinks that it's going to have, it's going to be hard to shoot. It's a tough one, isn't it? That is a tough one. It's a tough one. You can just, I can own anything? You tell me I could own. You tell me I could own a battleship? Because I guess I, I wanted a Barrett. And I thought that was a pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Barrett, yeah. That's usually the bucket list thing, right? Because those are great guns, and we yeah. got, it, and those are attainable. You know, people can get those. People can buy those. I would probably just purchase an around the world tour that will constantly just, keep me touring around the world. Just, just travel around just the world. Just to go see everything, you know. Just. Now, I'm sure you did a lot of traveling in your. Yes, I would do some great places, but guess what? None of them are vacation spots. <laughs> right. Is it everybody's wanting to kill you. Everyone's you shooting at us, or we're out in the middle of the desert someplace, or, I mean, I just want to go place. I want to go where there's sand, but there's a beach connected to that sand. There's not out in a big sandbox. Right, right. Big Papa, welcome in. Uh, you guys got any questions for Chris? Chris Spence, one of the original 12 horsemen. Uh, the book. Hold that up real quick. Horse Soldiers by Doug Stanton. Uh, was Doug one of the horsemen, or is he just no, the Doug, pen? No, Doug Stanton's a, a well-renowned author. He also wrote um, the Indianapolis book about the sinking of the USS Indian, the Indianapolis, which gave a detailed account of all the sailors who were eaten by sharks. Oh, um, after the USS, the key mission of the USS Indianapolis during World War II is it brought the nuclear, the atomic bombs yeah. to the island where the Enola Gay was. So after they dropped off their, the nuclear bombs, Fat Man and Little, and Fat Man and, and Tall Boy. Tall Boy, yeah. After they dropped them off, they went back out to sea and three or four days before the war ended, they were torpedoed and sank abruptly, which left everybody, and since it was near the end of the war, no one was really looking out for them. So they were basically hanging out in shark-infested waters for about a week mm. until someone finally spotted them, and hundreds of the people who were in the water were eventually eaten by sharks. Damn. Um, if you could spend the day at the range with anyone or any group of people, whether they're dead, still alive, fictional, who would it be? I think it would have to be the folks from Tombstone. <laughs> which, uh, which, which ones would you pick? All of them? I think all of them. I think it would just be better as a group because they yeah. each had their individual skill sets. Yeah, but and not Wyatt Earp movie, Tombstone, right? Right, the original Tombstone folks, yeah. just because they were all accomplished lawmen and firearms folks from way back in the day. So Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Holliday. The, the other Earp brothers. Yep. Yeah, that'd be cool. We get a lot of people say that one. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Tombstone. And that's like one of the favorite like movies too, Tombstone. Is well, like I, I think we, Hollywood has given such a good account of that fight and that yeah. style. But nobody ever says Wyatt Earp, the movie Wyatt Earp. They always say Tombstone. You know, it's the better of the two movies, no doubt. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So what's, uh, what's next for Chris Spence? What's going on with you? Well, I just spent the last week in Oregon for a project called Remembering America's Heroes. It's an Oregon-based veterans group. It's a 501c3, of course. And what they do is they do a thing called the Living History Project. Mm -hmm. And for the past 23 years, they've been bringing vets into schools and let those vets talk to school children 
about sacrifice, serving in the military, and things, and things like that, just to give them an appreciation. And they try to get a lot of veterans from the Oregon area. So it's Oregon kids seeing Oregon vets. And they also bring in a multitude of um, really distinguished veterans from World War II through, t- through today, uh, to include, um, they had Desmond Doss's son from Hacksaw Ridge. He was there th- this year. Oh, cool. And then they also had one of the last 11 remaining Tuskegee Air- Airmen, mm-hmm. who was also a POW. Alex Jefferson was in attendance as well. They had members from the um, Chozon Reservoir who fought in the other direction after the Chinese invaded North Korea. And then they had a bunch of uh, Native American tribes represented who were all vets. Okay, that's one of, a great and, event. And one of the schools we went to was the Chamawa Indian School, which is in Oregon. So a lot of these children from Indian tribes all over the United States got to see Indian veterans and what they were able to do after, after they left their reservations. Okay. And they really had a great connection with the kids. Very nice. Very nice. So do you are you on social media or anything where people can reach you if they have questions or want to get in touch or maybe they want to get your book? Uh, Chris Spence on Facebook. Okay. There you go. It's that simple, guys. Chris Spence. Christopher on. Spence. Sorry. Christopher Spence. Okay. Now, who played you in the movie? Nobody did because I was not covered. <laughs> you were not covered in the movie. There huh? were two teams there, and they had the 12 guys. I guess they only had enough money for 12 actors, not 18, because <laughs> we had the group of 12 and then the group of six, and we were intermingled. Yeah. So they just focused on those 12. Okay. Yeah, which goes back to my question, was there more than 12, and you were, yes. you were the, the ensemble cast, I guess. Right. <laughs> So if, if somebody were to play you in the movie, who would you who would you think would, would have played you? Who who would they have cast for you? Hopefully someone who speaks English better than me. So um <laughs> You speak perfect <laughs> English, dude. <laughs> well no, actually um from the third grade on I used to stutter. I used to sound like Mel Tillis. Oh my god. But I have worked You're constantly, doing really good, yeah. Work constantly to try to work my way out of that. Yeah. So from you know, in the third grade stuttering to now public speaking. It's a huge transition. So anybody who stutters out there, don't be afraid. Open your voice up and now you'll eventually work your way out of it. And it's I'm, a good message. And yeah. another thing, stutterers, we have one of the largest vocabularies of any pe- of, of anybody because we have to find different words we don't stutter on. <laughs> right. right. We have trigger words that will stutter you gotta on. you got to be diverse. So yeah. we, we, work, we have workaround words, yeah. which mean the same thing. What was the cartoon character that, uh, that did that? Porky Pig. Porky Pig, right. He would come out, and you think he was going to say something, and he'd switch to something else. Yep. That's switch, all, folks. Switch to, <laughs> <laughs> that's all, folks. And uh, that is all, folks. We're going to wrap up our uh, our interviews here at Royal Range USA. Uh, Chris, thank you again so much no, for taking the time. No, thank you for ha- having me. It's been my you, honor. You are welcome to be on anytime. Thank love you very much. Love to have much. you on. Um, guys, go show Chris uh, some love on his Facebook page there. Go and uh, you know get get the book. Horse soldiers, uh, come to Royal Range USA next time he's here. He'll autograph it for you, and uh, make sure you just come to Royal Range next time you're in uh, you're in Nash Vegas. We'll be back with more from the Talking Lead Podcast. Stand by. Okay, awesome interview with Chris there. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was uh, probably somebody that I'm going to have back on. He's uh, he's got a lot of stories uh, that he could share with us, and seems like a pretty cool guy. So. Don't be surprised if we have Chris on again. So now, I know you guys have been waiting for this. Let's, uh, who wants to make the announcement? You want to make the announcement? Do you want me to make the announcement? How are you going to do this? Uh, let's let Chris make the announcement since he's uh, one of the driving forces behind it. So Okay. So new guy, new guy, new guy. You get the honors. Yes, sir. All right. Put the pressure on me. Yeah. So we are going to be doing a contest uh, to where we'll be getting some product away and we are going to call that what did we come up with edc pocket dump there you go the edc pocket dump so hashtag edc pocket dump so, so what so, yeah so what you guys got to do is we want we're trying to promote um civilian sheepdog interaction more so with the with the police with the fire department with the ems we want you guys to actually go visit your local station. Take a selfie in front of the station with a uniformed 
in a individual, whether it's the police, the fire department, EMS, whatever it may be, if you can like get the logo in the background or something like that, that would be cool too. Uh, but we want you to take a selfie or have somebody take the picture, you know, either way. Tag us, Talking Lead, tag Fleoa, tag Buck Knives, tag Streamlight, and then you got to put the hashtag EDC Pocket Dump in there. That's going to make it easy for us to find in case you jack up one of our tags or something like that. Um, but just so you know what our tags are, we'll, we'll tell you what those are so you can, you can have those. Uh, we're going to be giving away five of these packages, and we're going to tell you what the package will include in just a minute. Uh, but then on the flip side of that, for our, our sheepdog, our law enforcement, uh, military, military, this counts for military also, fire department, uh, EMS, for you guys to win this, you got to go out into the public and with your uniforms on, you know, maybe you're at lunch or something like that and just, you know, take a picture, uh, interacting, introduce yourself, you know, to the public, take a selfie of that and then do the same thing. Tag Talking Lead Fleoa, Buck Knives, Streamlight, hashtag EDC Pocket Dump, and then um, Facebook or Instagram or both, you know, however you guys want to do it. And there's no limit on how many of these you can do. We're going to just randomly, um, I don't know if we're going to do it like two a week or every week, you know, how we're going to do that. We haven't really decided yet, but we're going to go through and we're going to pick random winners, but you got to have all the criteria in there to qualify. So if you jack up EDC pocket dump, you know, as we're searching for that and yours doesn't come up, it's not our fault. (laughs) So... Um, but we're going to give five to, uh, you civilians and then five to, um, the sheepdog, law enforcement, military, uh, fire department. Did I say that already? E, uh, EMTs, EMS, EMS, EMTs, EMS, whatever. Whatever, whatever it may be. But yeah, that's, that's our new giveaway. So Bill, tell them what's going to be in the uh, pocket dump. Well, for those lead heads that win this or are awarded this, rewarded this, you will get a battlefield watch a buck knives spitfire blue line pocket knife and a streamlight flashlight um and unfortunately we cannot get brian osborne from streamlight on this evening he is busy but uh that is the package that you guys will will get very nice and we're going to start this we want you to go ahead and start posting those now but we probably won't do the first giveaway until i'm going to say the first of the year or do you want to start now? You want to start December? Yeah, let's start in December. Okay, so we're going to start this in December, Bill says. So go ahead and start posting those now. And then each episode, uh, we're going to pick, you know, one or two winners until we'll pick a civilian and we'll pick a law enforcement each time. How about that? Or yeah, not just law enforcement, but a, a civilian and a sheepdog each, each episode. So we'll give two away each episode until they're gone. That sound fair enough? Sounds fair enough. Sounds I good. mean, if you guys can't tell, we're making this up as we, as we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so super organized, uh, yeah. super, but it's super easy too, you know. But I mean, you're talking about you know somewhere in the neighborhood of what about between two fifty between two and three hundred dollars of uh, of merchandise here. So I want you guys to show Buck Knives and Streamlight and of course Fleoa, uh, lots and lots and lots of love on this. Uh, additional remarks are fine if you want to put those in your post. Uh, just those key elements you have to have in there and keep it, you know, keep it civil. Don't, you know, don't do anything crazy. And you, you sheepdogs don't, you know, get in trouble at work over doing this either. Make sure it's, you know, it's cool that you do this. And we don't want anybody to lose their job over this. It's supposed to be a fun thing. Correct. So you guys know we're at Talking Lead on Instagram. And Facebook's, you know, we're the same. It's just Talking Lead. You put at Talking Lead in there and we come up. Fleoa, uh, Bill, tell them how they tag Fleoa. You would have to tag me, which is uh, at Fleoa, F-L-E-O-A, Bill H. And I'm only on Instagram, private account. So you're just going to have to tag me there. Um, Don't do Facebook, sorry. Okay, so for so. Flea and, you know, f- being federal government, they don't do a lot of this social media stuff. So hashtag. So ta- tag Bill on Instagram, which is at Fleoa Bill H, and then hashtag Fleoa. Do that. That'll work. Okay. 
So that's a requirement. You got a hashtag F L E O A. And then um, Brian, what's Brian's since he's not, you know, Brian's right for Streamlight. Right. What's Streamlight? For Streamlight. Instagram is at Streamlight Inc. So S T R E A M L I G H T I N C. Okay. Is that Facebook and Instagram? Hell, if I know, I don't have Facebook. So Let's that's, see. that's at least. <laughs> STI. We're making this up, Chris. So, yeah. right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you do have a computer right there, right? <laughs> yeah, I do, but I don't have ins- Facebook, so I we don't want to know what's up on his computer, right? Okay, Actually, so looks like Streamlight <laughs> is Streamlight Inc. on Facebook too, and they'll be the ones that have the big following, ninety-eight thousand there. So, uh, and then Brooksy for Buck Knives for Buck, it is. For Facebook, it is just Buck Knives. For Instagram, at Buck Knives. So make sure you get both Ks in there because some people will just put the one K. Ah, there you go. So there are two Ks in the middle of it. Okay. So just real quick, I'll go over this one more time. You you got to go to your local stations. You got to take a picture with uh, whatever department that you go to uh, in front of the building or uh, inside with the signia. Uh, logo and a uniformed uh, personnel, and then tag Talking Lead, Fleoa, Buck Knives, Streamlight, hashtag EDC Pocket Dump, hashtag Fleoa. You might as well just do hashtag Talking Lead, hashtag Buck Knives, hashtag Streamlight. Also, so just go ahead and do that too. I mean, it's it's almost three hundred dollars worth of stuff here. I think you could put a little work in, guys. Quit complaining. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So I'm sitting here complaining. Keep it clean and be safe. I'm sitting here complaining to myself, you know. So, <laughs> but uh, this is these are awesome giveaways. Uh, the knives. Tell them about the knives that that are going to be coming with this uh, EDC pocket dump. So it's the uh, 722 Blue Line Spitfire, and they're aluminum sides. It's got the uh, picture of the flag with the blue line through it. It's got a black blade and uh, plain edge. So it's a it is a fantastic knife. Very cool. It's one of my favorites. It's nice and thin. It's lightweight, uh, and obviously it has a uh, very razor sharp edge to it. Nice. So and then of course you guys are familiar with the Battlefield, the Defy Battlefield watch. Uh, very cool watch there. And uh, the Streamlight. Uh, do you know what uh, what models are going to be with that? Yeah, we have uh, Protac. 2L X's. Okay. Uh, a few of those. We've got ProTac HL X's. So, wait, let me go back. The 2L X, 500 lumen, bright as hell. Each of these comes with a sheath. Um, the 2L X is 2CR123 uh, operated. The uh, HL X is 1,000 lumens, rechargeable Ooh. lithium ion battery. Um, and then we have some ProTac HPL uh, USB, which has uh, a rechargeable battery as well, 1,000 lumens. It is bright as Hades. I lit up our entire great room <laughs> this evening, and wife and daughter were looking at me like, what the hell are you doing? We're trying to watch a movie, and now it's daylight in here. So th- they are amazingly bright. Very cool. So that's something to look forward to, guys. And we're going to start those uh, in December. But go ahead and start making your post as you're hearing this now. And if you have any questions, just email me, talkinglet at gmail.com, and put uh, EDC pocket dump in the uh, the subject there. So uh, let's, let's learn a little bit about Brooksy. Um, tell us about Buck Knives, Brooksy. Uh, Buck Knives is... Well, it was established in 1902. So been around, been around a minute. <laughs> yeah, been around for a little while. It is a family-owned business. The Buck, uh, the name of Buck Knives is a family name. So our uh, CEO is CJ Buck. Okay. And he is fourth generation, and we have uh, fifth generation in the building as well. His son and his daughter. So. Uh, yeah, we've been around for a long time. And it's a, it's not publicly traded. It's still family owned, right? Still family owned. Very cool. And you guys are based out of where? Idaho? We, we are in Northern Idaho in a little town called Post Falls. Have they always been there? No, sir. They were, so they're, 
They started, I believe it was Kansas City, uh-huh. in a in the basement of a church. Oh, and uh, wow. yeah, that's where it all started. And then um, they went to San Diego, and they were there for a long time. I believe they moved uh, from San Diego here about 15 years ago. Okay. So uh, they they saw the writing on the wall in California, you know, as far as <laughs> yeah. how difficult it is, and uh, moved up here to northern Idaho. Good move for them, definitely. And yes, sir. and um, I was talking to a friend the other day, you know, and we were talking about Buck Knives, and uh, you know, I was telling, I was showing him that uh, Skinner that that you sent me, and uh, he was like, he was really amazed with it. He goes, "That's a." You know, buck knives? And I go, yeah. He goes, I thought they just did, you know, pocket knives. <laughs> I was like, no, no, they do. They've got full line of, you know, knives. they got hunting knives, tactical knives. They've got cutlery, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. they got the full gamut. <laughs> That's right. I was amazed at the offering. Yeah. Uh, when I first got introduced to you, Chris, and started poking around the website, I'm like, holy shit, they make a lot more than I ever expected. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely one of the myths is that, you know, it's all pocket knives. But uh, like you said, we Did have you say myth? Kitchen... Did you say myth? Sorry, I brought up that word. Is, is it I... myth? I think it's time for the Talking Lead Back to Fight the Myths with Chris Brooksy. <laughs> what a smooth segue, huh? No doubt. Right, right. <laughs> well done. Yeah. And I think so... you've actually got another fact to fight the myth that will. We'll talk about, but touch on that, the different lines of knives that Buck Knives have. Well, we do, uh, like you mentioned, we have the pocket knives. Of course, we have the pocket knives. And then we've got uh, our EDC line, our everyday carry, uh, which is a wide range of knives there. We have hunting, of course. Hunting is uh, our number one product. Okay. We have, yeah, we have uh, tactical. We have the kitchen line. So we've got chef's knives, steak knives, etc. Uh, we got we some really, really nice kitchen knives. I was, they are I nice. was looking, and uh, you got some that have like the staghorn handles. Elkhorn, yep. The elkhorn. Yep. Oh my gosh, those were beautiful. Love yeah, them. those are all made from the sheds that the Boy Scouts of America collect uh, from the elk refuges. Uh, there is the main one is there in. Um, uh, Wyoming. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> so they, they go out and they collect. I believe they are the only ones that are allowed to collect the sheds that the elk drop. And then we purchase those sheds from them and make those knives. We make all sorts of knives, not just the kitchen line, but uh, a lot of our hunting knives, pocket knives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then our specialty, <clears throat> excuse me, our specialty knives uh, have a lot of elk corn in them. You, you've got a a feature on your website to where you can go custom make one, right? Custom make a knife. Yeah. You can go to our website and basically build your own knife. Uh, it's, uh, called CKS or custom knife shop. And you can go in there and you can pick from a whole bunch of different knives, designs that you want to create. And you pick the, the (laughs) the blades, the handles, the materials, colors. I did about five of those the other night and I was just like, Oh man, (laughs) I'm getting carried away. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. So you guys go check out Buck Knives website. Uh, it's, it's, I said they, they've got the full, the full run of knives there. Anything you could, could ever want or need, they've got it there at Buck Knives. Um, but we've got another myth that we want to bust and, uh, you want to, want to hit that one? Sure. One of the, uh, the myths that I get the most, uh, especially when we are at consumer shows is people will come up and say, you know, I really like your knives, but uh, I've just kind of passed on them because they're made in China. What? <laughs> and and it, it's kind of mind-blowing. I'm not really sure where, where they this got comes that. from. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they heard it from a friend or what. But well, maybe really there's a bootleg. Do, maybe there's some bootleg Chinese ones out there. You know, they, they do well, that on a lot of stuff. Well, there are. There definitely are. And we do produce a very small amount of knives in china but it's like 10 percent. Mm-hmm. the rest are all made right here in our factory in post falls and uh America. so it murka murka and so it does blow me away how many people actually think that it's made here or, or made overseas made and then china. um you know there was a 
there was a short period of time when we were moving from San Diego to uh, Post Falls, and we weren't literally producing the knives, but still, we still didn't go overseas for it. Yeah. Um, they're they're made right here. I think Bill and I need to come up to the factory and do a uh, Instagram live and just actually show people, hey, here's the factory. We're in America. They're being made. This ain't China. <laughs> oh hell, I'm thinking of doing a full podcast from headquarters with Chris and uh, CJ. Well, yeah, that would be that would be awesome to do that. But I'm just saying, you know, to bust the myth, we got to have visual. Right. You know, gotta, yes, got to yes. do the visual. That's right. Yeah. Anytime guys, you come on up and, and, uh, you can do a live event. We just did a live event today. So, uh, you know, we were downstairs in the, actually in the CKS area, uh, showing some of the products that are being made Nice uh, for folks out there. But, uh, yeah, we have, it's a 130 plus thousand square foot factory. Very cool. So it's wow. good size. We do a lot of different things here. I mean, it's not like Bill and I to just invite ourselves somewhere. You know? No. <laughs> well, Chris and I already discussed it and I already got the open invite, so I'm, I'm, I'm good. That's right. Yeah. Now you, like, both, you, now you both can come on up. Yeah, I just kind of invited myself, though. <laughs> that's, that's all right. I'm going to invite myself to uh, your place sometime. Heck yeah, man. You, it's oh, yeah. A, it's an open door policy. You're always welcome. Bill tell you. Bill oh, knows. yes. Bill knows. Been there many a time. Had a ball. All right, guys. Um, do we have anything else we want to talk about? Did we cover everything? Did I forget? Well, the, um, what did I forget? I gotta thank I gotta thank Chris and uh, Buck Knives and Streamlight for jumping on this EDC pocket dump. Yeah, yeah. and then the uh, uh, Black Friday Cyber Monday. Yeah, um, you know, a couple of years ago when you and I were at NRA and yeah. you know we were at the HTC booth and you're doing the podcast and yeah. Buck Knives was right across from us and CJ was there and you were swamped and and I didn't notice. I mean, I was so busy, had, I, I had no idea they were right across from us. Yeah, you had no clue, and I just <laughs> it was so busy. I stepped away and just started shooting the shit with CJ, and then you know, great freaking guy, had a blast talking with him, and then now two years later, um, super excited to say that Flioa is going to start working with Buck Knives and Buck with Flioa on uh, very cool with our membership and uh, just beyond excited to do it um, and you know having met CJ and being introduced to Chris through a mutual friend and it just worked out good yeah enough. that's great yeah I can't say enough good about it so well, well, congratulations be, to work with you Chris yeah thank you it's going to be a good time it is yeah very good and uh, I can't allude to shot show yet I uh, wasn't given the green light, but uh, I may have an announcement for you guys uh, coming up soon, and it it could involve with one of these guys on the show here. So <laughs> that's, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm going to say about that right now. Just a subtle hint. Just a subtle hint. Uh, but Chris, yes, thank you so much for taking the time to be on and putting together this um, this giveaway for the Leadheads. I know I didn't want to call it a giveaway, but. Uh, it's, it's, Awards. A, it's, it's a reward, we're rewarding our lead heads. Um, yes, so thank you for doing that. Um, we got to get Brian on the phone. Got to thank Brian for doing this too. Bill, thank you. And Flioa, uh, for the watches, the lead heads are going to absolutely eat this up. I know it. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys for making this possible. Yeah. yeah no, I got to thank you. Yeah, I got to thank Chris as well as same with the uh, Osborne because those guys, when I was talking to them, they jumped on it instantly. Um, like no hesitation. We're in two days later, Chris had everything shipped out to me three days later, Brian had everything shipped out to me. So guys, thank you. I, yeah, it's I awesome. appreciate it. it. And Happy you lead heads, it. make sure you go and thank buck knives. Thank streamlight. Thank Fleoa. Thank bill. Uh, go to their Facebook pages, their Instagrams and, uh, just show them the lead head support. Like you do everybody who, uh, supports this show. You guys are awesome in doing that. So uh, unless you guys have anything else uh, that's bringing us to the end of another episode of the Talking Lead podcast, make sure, guys, set your calendars, uh, your watches. Thanksgiving Day, the Talking Lead, it's the fourth annual Black Friday Cyber Monday special bonus show, is going to hit the airwaves. And I'm telling you, it's going to be well worth your listen. Even if it's four hours long, there's going to be so many awesome deals on this this uh, year's episode. Uh, it's it's crazy. It's going to be nuts. So, Bill, make sure you uh, rest the pipes 
between now and then because we're going to be doing a lot of talking. Sounds good. I'll be ready, dude. <laughs> okay. And again, as always, make sure you support those that support the Talking Lead podcast. Right on Optics. Check them out. Rideonoptics.com. Modern Spartan Systems. ModernSpartanSystems.com. X Steel Targets. X Steel Targets.com. 1776 United, the official swag provider of Talking Lead. Get your t shirts, get your patches. And we're still working on those new logo uh, tumblers. They'll be coming out soon. But you can get your evil black assault mugs at dip123.com forward slash talking lead. Those are still available there. A good buddy Danny over there is uh, keeping those in stock for you guys. So go uh, go get those. They're, they're great this time of year to keep your hot drinks hot and cold drinks cold. Minutes colder than a Yeti, the talking lead. Ladies and gentlemen, get them. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, Keltec, KeltecWeapons.com. Love those guys. Chad Enos, uh, our good buddy, uh, he is recovering. He had a motorcycle accident not too long ago. And I know some of you lit- leadheads reached out to Chad and showed him our support. Uh, continue to do that as well. Chad, I hope you get, get better soon. Those ribs, they'll heal in time. You'll be all right. Ba- back on the competition scene in no time. And then uh, always support Sheepdog Impact Assistance. We've been trying to get Sergeant Major on. They've been deployed again. They went back down to Florida. It was hit so hard that uh, there's still many areas down there that are devastated. So they've uh, put together another team. They're down there for another week or two at least, I think. But we were going to try to do a live stream with Sergeant Major while he was down there. Um, But the reception's been kind of crappy. But they still need your support on that. So go to sheepdogia.org and uh, give them your donation. Show them the lead head love. Guys, again, thank you so much. Appreciate everything. Well, uh, on behalf of Buck Knives, thanks for having us on the on the podcast. It's, it's great to uh, hang out for a little while, talk about product and, and all the other companies you're affiliated with. Want to make sure we wish all of our military, law enforcement, EMS folks a uh, happy and safe Thanksgiving and a Merry Christmas. All right, guys, that wraps up another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. As always, Leadheads, keep your loved ones close. And your buck knife closer. And if we all membership active. Uh, and as Chris said earlier, happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year to all you guys. And don't miss the Black Friday Cyber Monday show. Yeah, better not, Jeff. Right. You don't. <laughs>